Salam everyone and welcome back to the Master Rothless Autonomous Economic Zone prepared to be checked and all goods processed. This will to begin mandatory inspection. Today we are taking a look at the newest content injection from Paradox, focusing on the Hussites. Do you believe in God? That's a complicated question. But you may be wondering, is Hussite right for you? Ask yourself these questions. Do you enjoy defenstration? Are you one-eyed and do you sexually identify as a wagon fort? If yes, come this way, King. If no, check out this window. Wow, this is your room? It's so- Oh my god! Now before we continue, what is a Hussite? Hussites were and still are a Czech Christian movement following the teachings of John Hus. Mr. Hus was a theologian who advocated for church reform. His usual proselytizing hunting grounds were in and around Bohemia, but under the protection of his friends he went to the Consul of Constance in order to aid in the reform of the Catholic Church. To make this story short, they burned him alive. His demise would lead to the creation of the Hussite faith, sparking a series of crusades which involved throwing heretics out of windows. With history covered, what do you get being Hussite in EU4? Hussites get access to unique religious mechanics, which are actually reskinned Protestant mechanics in disguise. Church aspects are very balanced, and when combined with starting ideas, you can outclass the competition around you. Now your nation starts off in a political interregnum, Catholic with the chosen people concentrated down south. Hussites can actually be free to play as independent Moravia, the fastest way to play as Hussites. The starting situation is not ideal, but Bohemian history changes with one single event, containing the choice to side with Rome, to side with the Hussites, or some deformed combination of the two. When you finally convert, it's time for step two. Step two focuses on expansion in your playthroughs, divided by phases or spheres of expansion. Unfortunately, any western northern expansion will force you to deal with the Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire, or HRE, was a collection of territories throughout Europe united under a decentralized limited elective monarchy containing hundreds of kingdoms, free imperial cities, prince bishoprics, and more depraved political alignments. While all under the HRE are subject to the emperor, they have a small degree of independence which results in wars that turn the empire into a European war-torn hellscape. When an outside power attacks any member of the HRE, the emperor will come to aid them, with any territory annexed being demanded back to the empire. If you don't, he sanctions your province, making the currency worthless, food scarce, and morals absent. Because of this, we initially pivot our focus to eastern lands as hell and prime targets for conquest. But the Bohemian mission tree includes an alternative way of subjugation, creating a harem from the royal families I integrated. Normally, being against this many nations and being this outnumbered is an issue, but our close proximity to the first institutions gives us a huge technological lead alongside ideas, highly trained Czech warriors, and a certain ally who's very good at cultural conversion. Poland with Lithuania latched onto its back are great demonstrations for Wagenberg technology. Hungary is easy prey before they become an unwilling participant in inbreeding. The German princes, Saxony and Brandenburg are difficult with both being HRE members. Aggressive expansion grows even more in the HRE, my force the unions being very unpopular since I treat aggressive expansion as if it's just a number. My negligence eventually resulted in the largest coalition known to Europe, followed with a larger coalition, and one larger after that. And after that, and after that, and after that, and after that. Even with all my unions, vassals, and unwilling allies, I was no match for the constant coalitions. Now, I fought a lot of punitive wars, and some of them can be quite personal. One was even led by Constans, the place where John Hus met his end. But finally, after a few attempts, I managed to create the Bohemian Commonwealth. My political alliances, plus my superior technology, were able to dominate all coalitions henceforth. In between German migrations, me and my loyal vassals managed to dethrone the Habsburgs. My plan was to attack Austrian allies, especially ones outside the HRE, to avoid the whole empire's wrath. Wait until her side. While we expand west, we should look eastward to the succulent lands of Russia. The Tsars have two clear advantages over us, a never-ending supply of manpower and the endless Eurasian steppe. Laying siege is painful, lengthy, and makes me thankful for a dual monitor setup. It will take many wars to bring Russia down to size, but once defeated, all of Asia is open to Bohemia. In regards to Europe, I would constantly fight with all the European majors to lock them in truce timers, preventing them from joining the aforementioned coalitions, and also providing a 
lucrative way to quickly gain cash for my empire. This leaves few strong European nations left to challenge you, but in one campaign I had a very long-standing issue with France. French allied several HRE members, including the emperor himself, preventing any bohemian adventurism. When I did fight, French wars were very balanced at first, with the nation maintaining technological and military priority. I say at first because as if my prayers were answered by John Huss himself, I was given generals that destroyed any semblance of a fair conflict. Alongside our focus on East and West, we forget about one more important path to expansion, South. Let's make an unrelated transition to the Bohemian Mission Tree with the most claims. The Ottomans are normally a barrier to your expansion, with them being the final boss of EU4 besides Ola. But they typically ally the enemies of their rivals, Poland, Austria, and Hungary, making you the perfect ally for the Osmanoglu family. With the element of surprise, I can attack the Turks anytime. Logically, I took extra precautions when dealing with the strongest nation on the planet. In hindsight, these precautions were completely worthless. I destroyed the Turks with even my most basic military. One strategy to highlight was my big brain idea of using an eastern ally as a distraction, leaving the Balkans in Asia Minor empty. If you want a challenge against the Ottomans, I would make an early attempt against them as the Anatolian troops are best early in the game and later on becoming impotent. With manpower being a liability, the Turks only hope is their Mediterranean navy. This pretty much caps off all possible expansion routes and finishes off most of the Bohemian mission tree. The next set of missions provide an assortment of bonuses for your empire. Finally, after all unique missions have been explored, you get the standard European missions and the Holy Roman Empire missions. Disappointing given how small the Bohemian mission tree is. At this point, you should be ready for your Hussite Bohemian world conquest. For ideas, innovative. Nothing else matters. Innovative was the most important and to fully exploit it, you gotta adopt it early. A strict Hussite Bohemia has few disadvantages, but currently there's only one way to become Hussite HRE Emperor, enforcing religious peace after after the famed religion league wars have ended. If you manage to become Hussite Emperor before the peace, you will be faced with a litany of penalties from the legitimate and heretical princes within the empire. The majority of your time spent converting heretics through diplomatic or military means. But it's not all bad, as an event later in the game will spawn a Hussite center of reformation that will slowly convert Europe, eroding imperial authority and preventing Austria from passing reforms. When the Protestants are finally spawned, Hussite Bohemia will get an event with the choice of staying Hussite or becoming Protestant. If you deny it, Hussite will spread even faster, pushing countries into reformation and isolating Austria diplomatically. A Protestant Bohemia can overthrow Austria becoming the new emperor, but if you're willing to betray John Hus, you might as well culture shift to the more plentiful Germans or make your own OC nation. Behold Shekistan, the theocracy that came about after Japanese traveled to the Shek lands, replacing the native population with the aim of spreading the word of Zoroaster. And with that, we wrap up this video. I apologize for my absence, it's been too long and I hope this guide was useful or at least illuminated you to the idea of playing as Hussite Bohemia. More content to come and with John Huss's blessing much faster.